Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about what if parameters. We are going to cover the basics such as what is a what if parameter, how to add and use it in your Power BI reports. I'm also going to show you two real life-ish examples to allow you to jump back and forth between the video parts. I added timestamps so if you want to start with the examples, you can do that. If you learned something new today, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I post weekly videos and tutorials about Power BI features, data visualization and general best practices to follow as an analyst. Thanks in advance. Let's start with the basics. A what if parameter can provide a very unique interaction between the report itself and the report consumers. Compared to slicers and other visual interactions, this allows users to adjust some data, not just slice and dice it. These what-if parameters help report users to create different scenarios and analyze them compared to the original or default setup. With a nicely formatted interactive panel, we can create an easy way for users to work on or create different scenarios. Example for this could range from budgeting or planning, calculating different forecasts based on increased volume or decreased price, and much, much more. It is important to know that a what if parameter is always going to be a numerical input. However, with some tricks or smarts, we can reference text values as well, but more on that in another video. I believe it is important to remember that Power BI is a data visualization tool meaning that the main objective is to visualize data, not to change it. However, with a what if parameter, report creators can provide a platform or tool for report consumers where they can run some scenario analysis. Let me pause here for a quick second. While I know that there are ways to use the XMLA endpoint read-write capabilities to create a full-blown planning exercise within Power BI, but I'm not going to cover that today. Reasons behind it are quite simple. First of all, I'm not an expert with XMLA endpoint usage. Secondly, I believe that the vast majority of Power BI report creators won't be exposed to that option as it may require additional licensing tools and so on. If you want to learn a bit more about that topic, please use your favorite search engine and look for XMLA endpoint. Now, back to our topic. Now that we have covered the basics, it's time to head over to Power BI and see how to use them. To add the what-if parameter, we have to go to modeling on the ribbon and click on new parameter. In the pop-up block, we can name our parameter. I would suggest to always use a descriptive name, not just parameter one. I'm going to call it forecast as we will use it in a bit. In the data type selection, we can pick different numerical formats, whole, decimal, or fixed decimal numbers. As I mentioned in the basics, we can only add numbers with what if parameters. After that, we need to set up minimum and maximum values and the increment. For this demo, I'm going to leave all of that on default settings. Additionally, we can set a default value, which could be useful in some cases but again, for this demo, I'm going to leave it as blank. To be honest, for those reports where I added what if parameters, I prefer to have blank as default, just to make sure that it is not going to change anything without user interaction. Finally, we can add the slicer to the report page. Again, if the goal is to allow users to interact with the report, I don't see a point of not adding a slicer there. All of this is done now, so let's click on OK and see what is being generated by Power BI. If we head over to the data view and select our newly created parameter, we can see the values that are available. All numbers from 0 to 20 with an increment of 1. If we click on the measure that was also created, we can find a simple selected value measure. 
So a what if parameter generates values in a table based on our requirement and adds a selected value measure immediately as well. This measure is key to allow us to pick up users' input and use in our calculations. But before we look at that, let me show you how to fine-tune a parameter. Let's say that we realize that the 0 to 20 scale is too wide and the increment of 1 is too big of a step. Instead of creating a new parameter and delete this, we can adjust the code that Power BI used to generate this table. Head over to the formula bar and change 20 to 5 and 1 to 0 0.5. After that, we just need to change formatting option to decimal number and two decimal places. And look at that, we can quickly adjust min and max values, increments, and even the formatting options for a parameter. Now back to our report page. Let me add the card visual quickly with the measure. As we used blank as a default value when we created the parameter, this is going to be added to the report page. Just like any other slicer, we can change the type and use the formatting options to incorporate this parameter selection value into our report design. I reckon that in most cases, report users will need to interact with this parameter as a percentage, such as increase or decrease figures. For that purpose, decimal numbers are not going to provide a good user experience. So what I would suggest to do is changing the parameter values to 0 and 0 0.1 and adjust the increment as well. Once that's done, just change both the table and the measure formatting to percentage with two decimal places. Look at that, isn't this great? Next up is how and where can we use this. To demo this, I'm going to use a simple sales table. Let's say that we want our sales leaders to forecast their sales estimate for the new year. I have already added the column chart and the matrix to this page with the historical sales figures. Next, we need to add the slicer with the percentage values we created. And finally, create a sales forecast measure that picks up the sales increase forecast input. It's as simple as total sales multiplied with the forecast growth numbers. Of course, because we use incremental increases, we need to add one to get the right number. Now we can add our new measure to the visuals and our sales leaders will be able to see the impact of the increase that they pick. As you have seen it, it's really easy to use and select a parameter just like any other measure in Power BI. And because they behave just like any other measure, we can use them everywhere. Meaning that if your formula can pick up a measure as an argument, you will be able to place the selected parameter value inside it. I know, I know, many of you would like to see some cool and more advanced use cases for what if parameters. Here is the first one. I call this seasonality impact. On this page, you can find two parameters, one for summer months and another one for non-summer months. Let's pretend that we are a gelato shop and want to forecast the amount of milk we need to order based on our growth estimation. In summer, we assume that we will be able to sell 8% more gelatos, while during the non-summer months, we can only grow by 2%. 
Using our last year's meal consumption, we can easily forecast, even on a monthly basis, how much milk we are going to need. And if we want to adjust these figures, the only thing that we need to do is moving the slicer. There are two ways to create this calculation, either flagging in our day table summer and non-summer months, or in the forecast measure, make sure that we split the calculation. I use the first option as I found it a bit easier to implement. The second example is more of a standard scenario analysis. Let's say that we have a report on the number of rooms booked in our holiday resort by month and we are trying to estimate next year's resources or capacity needs based on three different options. The first option is a little bit pessimistic, assuming that our resort is going to face a 5% decrease in the number of visitors. The second option is in line with the expectation of the National Travel Agency, a slight increase of visitors, let's say 3%, while the last one is a super optimistic plan with 12% increase. We have a constant line across the visual, indicating our full capacity, which is 110 rooms. So it's clear to see that if, in fact, the most optimistic plan is going to take place, we will run out of rooms to offer. Additionally, even the realistic option shows that in February, we won't be able to cope with the demand. At this stage, it will be up to management to decide which option is deemed realistic and determine if they want to invest more in the resort to build new blocks. Of course, they also have an option to reduce the optimistic 12% to 8%. And then we can limit the number of visitors we have to send somewhere else. But they have the option to play with these figures and immediately see different scenarios. What if parameters are great to collect some information from your users and then use that data in data visualization? The examples we covered today were easy to create and they can provide flexibility for report users. With the scenario analysis, your Power BI report can be even more relevant and in a sense, fun for users to interact with. As a side note, I also used what if parameters on my birthday report Check it out, I'll add the link to the video at the end of this video. It was a lot of fun to create and play with. So what's your thoughts on what if parameters? Have you ever used them? If you haven't used them before, do you plan to use them after watching this tutorial? Let me know all of that down in the comment sections below, along with any other questions that you have. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that now you have a better understanding about what if parameters and you can start exploring them. Come back next week for another video or watch one of the videos on the top here. Until then, see ya!